Namaste right. and a warm welcome to the viewers who are watching this mega series of the Transformation Immersion, where we are getting to meet various experts and coaches to help us make our lives better. So today I have with me uh, Inev Avni, a personal development coach from UK. Welcome Inev. Uh, I see that you were working as a successful IT professional uh, three years before and now you're helping people in overcoming their limiting beliefs. Yes. So what drove you to make this uh, uh, career transition? Good question. Uh, so I was working as a, a user experience designer, helping people, el helping companies to um, create websites and systems that are user friendly and easy to use. And the part of that was always doing user testing, bringing people in and asking them for their opinions, for, for how they felt about the, the systems that we were creating. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was to do with the psychology, how, how they felt about the system, what they were, how it made them feel about themselves. Uh, and then at some point I realized that I was more interested in the people rather than the systems <laughs> and coaching seemed like a like a natural progression for me. Wow. So you know I, I love the title of your talk which is uh, Buddhist approach to coaching and I would like to know more about it. Uh, would you like to shed some light on your coaching approach? Yes of course. Uh, it, it really started when I, so I, I'm, I'm Buddhist, I believe in the Buddhist uh, philosophy, uh, and I noticed that a lot of the time in my coaching, the answers kind of came from Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So when, when you are allowing yourself to be who you meant to be, when you um, understand that a lot of your own suffering is from attachments, attachments to your ideas about who you need to be, how other people uh, are seeing you. Um, also, of course, the worry of being judged. That's again, uh, stemming from attachments of attachment to the, that image. Um, and as I was, I was, as I was working with, with my clients, I realized that really, if, if they um, get this kind of understanding that, that the more they become themselves, the, the more they become authentic or realize that they remember really, not, not so much realize, but remember who they, they are and who they're meant to be. This is where happiness comes from. Because when we shed all of these layers of wanting to be something or someone that we're not, or, or wanting to impress someone or something, when we shed all of this and we become ourselves, this is where happiness is because when we are true to ourselves, we are following our our path, our purpose. Mm -hmm. And we also allow ourselves to connect with our values, which means that we we already know where we are and, and how we are, where we need to go, how we need to show up, how we need to uh, approach life. So so really from having all of my, my conversations with my clients, I realized that it's already you know, yes, I am here and I'm eliciting how they're feeling at the moment and where they want to be and how they can uh, become who they, they want to become. But really all of this has already been thought on and approached already, you know, all these years ago with, with the Buddhist uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what type of coaching do you offer to people? Uh, because you said personal development, I think. Uh, yeah. You didn't say, but I, I, I checked out. <laughs> and for what problems people approach you generally? generally? Right. So, so what I call myself really is a confidence and personal development coach. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a nice way, it's like an umbrella term for really allowing people to, like I said before, to come back to who they, who they are. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time uh, people come to me when they feel stuck, when they're stuck in their lives and thinking, I don't know, I'm, I've been doing this for such a long time, I'm not happy. I used to be happy, I'm not happy anymore. What, what, what is missing? Mm -hmm. So when they're stuck in their lives or when they're fed up with some, some challenge that they, they think to, or they seem to, to have done or tried so many different solutions, but nothing works, that's uh, when they come to me. Also, uh, people that all of this has led them to maybe suffer with anxiety and stress. So, so they come to me and, and what we do is really, we put all of these on the table. When, when you become conscious of your issues and your challenges, you're also, it's easier for you to understand how you got to this kind of thinking. Uh, it's all about belief systems. 
So we, we have a story, we have a story and we have a strategy for everything and anything that we do in life. But it all comes from this belief system that we are this or that we are that. And a lot of the time, this uh, belief system comes from something that we didn't even understand that we created. You know, maybe a lot of the time in our childhood and, you know, we, we were who we were. And then our parents or family or society, they slowly, slowly start telling us who we are not. And that creates a conflict within us. And as, as we, we, you know, we don't know any better, we, we follow this. And then all these years later, we come, we say, actually, I'm not happy. There is something here that is so wrong in my life, but I don't know what it is. And what we do is we slowly uh, uncover what it is that they, um, what, the, what they believe at the moment and how it came to be and what it is that they haven't thought about. So it's really about taking the view as they come to me and expanding it and helping them to see that most of the challenges are self-made. So they put it in the way, so to speak. Would you mind sharing one or two of your client cases where you got breakthrough in their, uh, solving their cases? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so my my typical client, I'm uh, not sure there is a typical client because it can be either men or women. Uh, as I said, it's, it's about the people who are feeling stuck in their lives. I, um, so I guess I can I can give a couple of examples uh, that were quite interesting. Uh, one of my clients, she uh, wanted to start her own business. She she was um, employed. Uh, I, I just I won't mention any any recognizing details. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, she she was employed and she realized that um, her, the conditions at work were very not in her favor. Like really, she didn't get she wasn't paid very much, uh, and she she there was a lot of demand on her time and and all of that. But but there was something at her job that uh, the reason that she she kept there was because they allowed her to have some flexible time, and that was very important to her because she had a son that uh, she. She, 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 she liked the fact that she could still be with her son and, and still have the job. So already we can see that when we uh, have something that we're scared to lose, we are compromising uh, something that we wouldn't normally compromise. We wouldn't go to, to a job that you know, don't, doesn't uh, treat us very nicely or doesn't get uh, pays us very well when we very clearly can see that we are being taken advantage of. But because she had something to lose, she, she, she liked the, the flexible time, she agreed to that. Then there was some restructuring at her company and she, and she left there um, and she wanted to start her own business in that line of work. And yet she, although she was talking about it and she was very talented and very skilled and she had all of the experience, you could see, or I could see from just talking with her that there was this huge, mountain of limiting beliefs and something that was stopping her from actually starting uh, to get this dream come true. Uh, so we were looking at what, what is stopping you from taking the first step? What is, um, what, where is the blockage? And, and that was really interesting because she, she, could, she, she had no idea. She, she felt it. She felt like nearly physical stopping, you know, something stopping her from, from achieving what she wanted to, to achieve. Um, or even getting started. Uh, so so we, we started um, throwing ideas. It was one really interesting session. We started throwing uh, ideas on, you know, onto the table, what is going on. And you could see, because of, I, I, I look at the energy, I can see from the energy <clears throat> that we haven't uh, hit the, the nail on the head. And then she just said, oh, because when you, you become um, self-employed and when you start your own business, you have to work really, really long hours. And then it, the, the next thing she said was like, you know, I'm scared that I will not be able to spend any time with my son. Yeah. Right. And then and then there it was, you know, it was such a tiny little thought that meant everything. And from the moment that she understood that this was the blockage, there was a fear that she wouldn't be able to spend time with her son. Then she can say, OK, actually, you know, I can arrange the day so that when he's at school, I'm walking and, you know, um, she, she could start uh, looking and seeing really um, tangible ways to go around this. Mm -hmm. And with that tiny little thing, this blockage was released. 
and, and now she is working on her own business and, and it's, it's wonderful to see. So this, this is just a, an example of, um, of how the process is. Um, and another one, maybe is from anxiety um, area. A lot of the time, well, I'll, I'll tell you about one example, but uh, I know that a lot of, a lot of the time um, coaches and therapists that work uh, with anxiety, they tend to come at the stage of when you have the panic attack, here is what to do. Maybe breathing, maybe counting, maybe looking around you, stuff like that. I like to, to get the, a stage earlier. And I want to, to see what is actually causing the anxiety. Because, and, and I tell my clients, we, you were not born with anxiety. This is something that you brought on. If you brought it on, it means that you somehow, somewhere created coping mechanism which means that the anxiety is an easier thing to deal with than the actual fear that you are holding, you know, underneath all of that. So, so what, what I do with my clients is, is really to understand at what stage did you bring the anxiety? What is it that you, you're really scared of? And um, I guess it's, I'm not giving an, an, a specific example. I think it's, it's, a, it's fine to just explain about the uh, the approach really because because that that's that's what it really is is to help uh, people understand how something in the environment uh, created some fear inside them mm -hmm. and because they they didn't really know how to handle it 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 seemed to them of course unconsciously that um, this kind of behavior of panic and, and anxiety is is the solution and I'm not dissing it and I'm not saying it's an easy thing or, or something that is very easy to to change I'm just saying that when we understand that we bring it on, then we also understand that that is something that that there is a choice somewhere. Because if if you were suffering with anxiety and you didn't have a choice, you will be feeling it the whole time, the whole day long. Mm -hmm. The fact that you know when to to bring it on and when not, it means that there is something here that we can look inside and see. Okay, so what is really going on? And when you get to understand that. In my experience with my clients, you get to, to uh, this is how you start to change your relationship with anxiety. Now we are talking about limiting beliefs here, because some, somewhere we have picked them up. But what, what they are actually, you know, because they can be anything, you know, it's not common for, for you or me or for anybody else, you know, we all have our own different set of limiting beliefs. So what are these, yeah. you know, and how they are working? And then once we know, you know, we, we get the awareness that we have this type of thing and we are holding this type of belief, then how, how can we get rid of those? Right, right. So limiting beliefs, I mentioned a little bit earlier about how we all have a set of, um, of beliefs um, that, that we, we, we grew up with or we just adopted along the line. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can catch yourself uh, saying stuff like, you know, I'm a kind of person that... Oh, I've always been that. Um, and and if, if you actually listen to the words that you're using or that anyone is using. Oh, I lost your voice. Hello? Yeah, I cannot hear you. Can you? Uh, let me. Hello? Uh, Hello? Yeah, yes. I got you back. Okay. okay, I will make an adjustment. No problem with that. Yes, uh, I don't know where you lost me, um, but I was I was saying that uh, when when you if if you happen to to listen to to the words that you're using, mm -hmm. a lot of the time what comes up is is basically how you believe something is, not necessarily that this is actually how it is. Mm -hmm. So of course we say there is no such thing as truth because we each can see things in different ways. But the limiting beliefs is, is some sort of a belief that is unconscious, so you don't usually understand what it is. But it's, it's a belief that is causing you to, to behave in a certain way. So for example, if I want to apply for a job and I believe that I don't have enough experience, then I will not apply for that job. And it doesn't matter if my friends and say, they can say, what are you talking about? You've been in this industry for, you know, 15 years, you have all the experience that you need. If I, in my mind, decided that I don't have um, the, the experience, this is a limiting belief. 
right? So, so these are beliefs that are just, they're not, they're not true or, you know, we can't define them as true or not true, but they're just beliefs that are stopping you from doing something that you want to do. So we can call them limiting belief or dysfunctional beliefs. Um, and it's, it's all to do with really how you see your world. So um, sometimes when some you know, people come to me and they, they feel stuck or they feel blocked, this is really interesting uh, step forward is to really understand what is the story that they're telling themselves, right? Um, for example, um, one, one of my recent conversations I, ha I had with someone, um, um, this woman, she, she said, okay, I have two con contradicting values. One is family and the other one is independence, right? So the first thing I needed, I, I needed to ask, I needed to, to, to understand for myself is what does she, what does she mean by, yeah. uh, well, I understood family, but what does she mean by independence? And it was, it was interesting to see that in her mind, the independency was uh, totally to do with an event in her life. But this event is something that has already been and passed, mm -hmm. and it's not something that is actually useful for her to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So what she really wanted was the ability to uh, to know that she can approach anything uh, without being tied to anything. Mm -hmm. This is how she she could consciously explain this. But in her mind, independence meant that she was able to do everything and anything. So you know, be have have a very um, you know, successful relationship with her, with her kids and also uh, be able to go out and get a job and bring the money and, and all that as, as a single parent. So, oh, as, you, a single parent huh? as, a, as a single parent. So you can see that in her mind, the independency was very much attached to a previous uh, an event in the past or a period in her past, but is not necessarily um, the right one moving forward now that she's married and she has other, um, you know, people in, in her life that can help. So when you, um, when you see that there is some blockage in your life, you can nearly for sure say that there's probably some limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So then you, um, you start asking yourself, you know, what, what is it that I'm, I'm really thinking here? Mm -hmm. One way to unblock things, of course, if you go and you talk to like a coach or, or anyone that, that can listen, these blockages come, they're very uh, obvious very, very quickly. Um, but for yourself, if you feel that you're a little bit stuck, you can do some exercises like um, mind mapping, for example. Mm -hmm. So, so you can say, okay, I, I want you know this job, or I want what, what is going on in my life, and you write it down, and then you start writing um, your association with this word, and and very quickly you 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 know where you you know where, where you're going with this, and you will be able to to. You know, always ask yourself: Is this is this really true? Do I know this for be to be true? Do I know this to be absolutely true? Um, I think that also, I guess, uh, goes to the um, um, Byron Kitty. She has something called uh, the walk, uh, and she's asking some four questions, four very simple questions about: Do you know that this is absolutely true? Um, the Byron Kitty, By Byron Kitty. She she. Byron uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she's asking four questions. I think is is it is it true? Can you be hundred percent certain that this is true? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you telling yourself um, when you hear yourself say this? And then can you actually um, give to yourself three examples where this is actually not true? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a helpful uh, way to to help yourself see that in your mind you're kind of exaggerating, and. Maybe it's not exactly how it is, and and if you if you open it up, you are able to move forward, flow with it, actually. So, so after, you, know, uh, you see that today's world is chaotic, you know, and uh, you know we can we can figure out many things by ourselves. That's what we are you are you are helping people with, you know. So yeah. how can one connect with uh, their inner self or inner world, and you know, uh, do you know the ways, you know, because I know you are a Buddhist and maybe there are many ways you are, you must be following by yourself. So would you like to share something like that? Uh, I guess there is one, one thing that I always, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> my computer is making noises. I guess one, one thing that I say to myself is that I, I follow a, a very simple model. 
and and I always share that with my clients as well. Uh, the the model is is it has four stages. The first one is when we are uh, unconsciously uh, incompetent, and that means that we just as we are, everything is fine, everything is hunky dory, no problem, and we don't know what, what we don't know, so it's all it's all fine. But one day something comes along, and we think, you know, I, I don't really like that, or that doesn't sit with me very well, or what is going on? Why am I doing this? What makes me do that? These kind of questions come along, and then we are looking for some answers. And, and then you know we, we start a conversation or we start reading or research or, or, or stuff like that. And then um, we, we start changing into the, to the behavior that we, we want to have. Um, and, and slowly, slowly we move to the next part of the model, which is consciously incompetent. It means that um, we are working on it and it, we are struggling and it's, it's very, very hard but we know that we're also noticing from the environment that we are going in the right direction. So slowly, slowly, we, we battle with it, but we keep going, we, you know, persisting, and, and we can see the difference. Then uh, we, we move to the next stage, which is um, consciously competent, which means that now you're more flowing with it. You, you can really see that you've made some progress, but still it's very much conscious. conscious. You really need to pay attention to how you do things. And so you go on and you go on until you get to the next stage, which is uh, consciously, um, unconsciously competent, which means that you just do it. It's your second nature and everything, um, you know, just, it just happens. And then of course you start again. Mm -hmm. And what I, I like to, to do in my life is to pay attention to where I am in this cycle. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, if I, if I want to do something that I've never done before, yeah, um, say, for example, yeah, speaking, right? I think uh, everyone has a, they say that most people have a fear of, of public speaking. So, so say this is something that I want to do. So until now, it was, I was in the, you know, unconsciously incompetent because I knew I, I never done that. I knew I couldn't do that and I was okay with that. If I now want to, to do something about it, I will start getting opportunities. And every time I will go out there, do my, my speaking, there will be something that I will feel uncomfortable or scared or, you know, whatever negative conversations I'm having in my head. But I, I, will, I will still do this. So slowly, slowly, I will create the steps and I will move from uh, unconsciously incompetent to consciously incompetent. I will know that I'm making mistakes. I will take notes. I, I know that I'm improving, mm -hmm. but I will still understand that I'm in that stage then slowly, the more I do this, I will become consciously um, competent. I will be very much aware, of, yeah, that worked very well. I can do more of that. I, you know, here's an, a very good example of where I'm heading and so on and so on. And then until I get to the stage where I'm unconsciously competent, which means that I'm the best, you know, uh, public speaker out there. Yeah. So, so to understand where we are in the cycle really helps our motivation and the conversation that we are having with ourselves and, and not to give up as well. Yeah, so it's, it's very important to take action, you know, however small it is, but one should start somewhere <laughs> because everybody did start somewhere. Okay. Yeah. So, so I know, uh, like, when do you think a person should approach a coach and not a doctor? Right. That, well, that's an interesting question. Um, people um, ask me that a lot, not so much with reference to a doctor, but with the ther therapist, right? Because we, we, we all have challenges in our lives. And a lot of the time, the first call of action is, you know, go to the pub with your friends and, and tell them all your problems and... and, yeah, and all think out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But when, when you see that actually um, the, the, the problems, they persist and they very much like a pattern and you can see that you've been doing more of the same and you're now fed up with that, that that's, that's, for example, a very good uh, time to go. Now, the difference between, the way I see the difference between um, coaches and, and therapists is that uh, in, in therapy, in therapy you, you sit in the room and you ask why. Why, 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 why? And you go down, 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 you know, why is this happening? Why me? Why with this person? Why this time? And at the end of it, you are, you know, presented with a pile of pain that you've been hiding all your life. And you're like, 
I have no idea what to do with this now because I've been hiding it and now it's unhidden and it's in front of me and the pain is so, so much more. At least that was my experience with therapy when I went through it. The difference with, with, the, with coaching is that in coaching, you, you actually, you don't ask why, you ask what and how. So you ask yourself, how, how, can, I, how can I do this differently? And what makes it, um, what makes the environment be what it is? So as soon as you start asking these questions, you, you're actually opening the, the opportunities for, for change and for getting something that you didn't have before. So, so I say go into coaches in two different things. Either when you want to move away from pain, but you actually want to get the action and, and the change. So move away from pain. And the other thing is when you want something to, to come to change yourself. So, so it's not just moving away from pain, but it's also um, bringing or creating a, a reality that is different from what you have at the moment. So for example, if you, you want to, to be the best uh, employee that there is, uh, and you want to now move to, I don't know, get a promotion, for example, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're moving away from pain. It means that you are, you're wanting to create a new reality for yourself. Mm -hmm. So a coach, for example, would be very good with that. So, uh, so I think how can people get in touch with you if somebody wants to? What is with the me? best way? So I, I uh, because my name is a, a little bit difficult or challenging for people to, to say. Name, I think <laughs> I found it beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's a bit interesting uh, experience with my name. But uh, yeah, so my name is Einav Avni, but I go under the name of Untangled Coaching. Uh, and I'm on all social media platform. Um, and I have a website, of course, untangledcoaching.com. Um, and uh, yeah, if you happen to see my Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. Feel free to, to interact, to subscribe, to like, to comment. I always like the, the comments. And the, uh, there is also on Twitter, um, it's a new hashtag hour that I created uh, and it's called Ask the Coach. And it's, it's just new because I've, I've just uh, applied for the, for the hashtag, uh, Ask the Coach. And uh, every Tuesday at uh, 12 o'clock UK time, I invite people to just write questions or, or struggles or challenges or dilemmas or anything that they just want, um, you know, to share. And then I and hopefully there will be a group, a community. Um, we will hold all of us. We just deep in and, and and help as much as we can. So thank you so much. Ina. I think I said correctly now. <laughs> <laughs> for coming over to the Transformation Immersion and giving us beautiful insights about the change work you are doing and explaining to us about the limiting beliefs in detail. And uh, thank you to the wonderful people who are watching us from all over the world. And don't forget to let me know what you learned and think of this interview by either emailing me or commenting on my Facebook community, Body, Mind and Soul Healing. Uh, keep watching this mega series and stay healthy. Bye for now.